I'm very pleased to be invited to this forum uh, to talk about my experience on becoming a scientist and an educator. My name is Robert Ramirez, and I'm a professor of microbiology at San Francisco State University. So what are the lessons that I learned and that I hope to share in this presentation? I hope to remind you that uh, with persistence and motivation, a career in science and education is open to anyone. But success also depends on possessing a variety of skills. Uh, first of all, you should study each challenge very carefully. You should get as much information as possible. You should make very critical decisions. You should develop a good gut instinct, and you should be independent. And not surprisingly, many of these skills are necessary to practice good science. I was born in a small agricultural town in Northern California. I had a very happy childhood of running in the fields and climbing the trees behind my house. Uh, my mom was a homemaker. She was born here in the United States and graduated from high school. My father, on the other hand, was a Mexican national. He uh, was also illiterate. He could not read or write in Spanish or in English. Consequently, my father had to take jobs working in the fields. This resulted in a very low income in our household, and we were, for lack of a better word, very poor. Um, there, in addition, there was no tradition of education in my family. And this wasn't because of any negative association with education. It was just simply because my parents didn't know anything about it. For economic reasons, my father decided to move my family to Mexico, where he could secure a better living. Uh, the town that he moved us to was a very small rural town that lacked many services, including a high school. So at the, so at the age of 14, my education came to a stop. For four years, I worked on the family ranch. And finally, I decided, you know, this isn't very good and I decided to return to the United States. Once here in the United States, I got my GED diploma and I started attending a community college. I started to take every course that I could find that had the word basic in it. Basic mathematics, basic English, basic chemistry. Eventually, after four years of study, my advisor told me that it was time for me to transfer to a four-year university to get a bachelor's degree. And I was quite honestly surprised that I was even allowed to do that. Uh, I transferred to the University of California at Riverside, and those were the two happiest years of my life. I met people who became lifelong friends, and I took a variety of different courses. I took Shakespeare and art history, as well as physical chemistry and human embryology. It was everything that Ruth Simmons, the president of Brown University, said a university should be. She said that a university should provide a profession, it should provide a philosophy of life, it should provide independence, and it should provide an awareness of the world. And the, the education that I got at the University of California, Riverside, did all of these things for me. After I graduated, one of my professors offered me a job in her lab, and I did research for four years. Uh, it was there that I learned the precision of science. Uh, afterwards, I then attended the University of California at Davis, where I pursued my doctoral degree in microbiology. I then did my postdoctoral research at the University of California in San Francisco and at Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory. During my professional development, I was fortunate to have met several excellent mentors. The first was Dr. Katherine Atkinson at the University of California, Riverside. The second was Dr. Myrna Villarejo in, at the University of California, Davis. And lastly, Dr. Michael Esposito at Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory. In 1993, I was hired to teach at San Francisco State University. Eventually, I received tenure and I was promoted to full professor. At San Francisco State University, I teach various senior level courses in microbiology and in virology. Now, tell me about 
I also do research and I use yeast to study stress responses and lipid metabolism. At San Francisco State University, I work with a wonderful, diverse set of colleagues. Of the 40 professors in the biology department, eight are underrepresented minorities and five are gay or lesbian. Our country and our world needs an educated, diverse, and well-informed society. But we also face many challenges. Right now, we are in the midst of a severe economic crisis that makes the pursuit of an education much more difficult. But we also find ourselves in a society that is increasingly intolerant of minorities and people of color. I find this especially upsetting because I am a minority and I'm gay. If these negative influences are allowed to escalate, we will find ourselves without people like Ruth Simmons, the first African-American woman president of an Ivy League university, without Alfredo Quinones Hinojosa, a noted neurosurgeon, or without people like Luis Villarreal, an eminent virologist. We need to recognize that we need to involve all members of our society for our common good. We need to recognize the unique gift that each one of us possess. Thank you.